Thank you for tuning in. I'm Jason, the Bearded EV Guy, and I like to cover US-centric EV news. I'm still figuring out my schedule, and I'm not sure if I'm going to make this a daily or weekly podcast. If you have a preference, please email me at thebeardedevguy at gmail.com. I'd appreciate any feedback. To start the news off, the Barron's headline caught my eye. We drove in a Ford F-150 Lightning EV. The drive isn't the best part. Barron's recently drove the Ford F-150 Lightning, and they had great things to say about it. While the electric drive, instant torque, and smooth ride were all impressive, they pointed out two things that are game changers for most people's day-to-day -day lives. It is essentially a rolling generator and a workshop. I believe the Lightning will be the first vehicle in the United States that is built to function as a battery backup for your house. I have to say, I am extremely excited for this feature, and I wish other EVs had already started doing this. I mean, if you're already thinking about getting batteries for your house, it would make total sense to spend that money on an EV and just keep it parked at your house. That way, you also have an extra vehicle in case your main one is being serviced, and you can get used Nissan Leafs and other older EVs for about the same price as a Tesla Powerwall. But I digress. The other impressive feature is the amount of power outlets around the Lightning. This would allow contractors to keep their equipment charged while at a site, or you can plug in appliances while tailgating, and the use cases go on and on. I'm really excited about the future of electric trucks, in case you couldn't tell. Staying with Ford for a bit, some renders of Ford's $11.4 billion Blue Oval City have been released, and this factory looks amazing. For the podcast listeners, it looks to be a massive complex, and solar panels cover the parking lots, providing both energy production and shade for employees to park their cars under. The huge number of solar panels create a blue-green shimmer as far as the eye can see, and is quite stunning. I mean, I think literally every parking spot has a solar panel cover. Ford's Blue Oval City is a huge planned factory to help build EVs and also allow Ford to start their own battery production. It is a 3,600-acre campus stretching out for nearly six square miles. I'm especially excited that this is planned to be built in Tennessee, my current home state, with some battery production facilities also being built in Kentucky. This is one thing I'm super excited about as a patriotic American. EVs allow our car experience to be brought more in-house, meaning these will be built by American workers on American soil with mostly American-made parts and powered by American energy. It excites me that my car is fueled by energy made by my local energy authority and not oil that was drilled halfway around the world. I can literally drive to the dam that makes most of my house's energy and fuels my car. Also, if I ever get solar panels, I have the ability to fuel my car with my own property. There is not even a chance of doing that with a gas car. I just think, in general, the more you can support your local area, the better. And EVs allow more opportunity to do that. Real quick, speaking of US EV companies, have you heard about Aptera? They are the most unique EV company I've ever seen, and they are hoping to start production within a year. I've covered them before, but if you want to support the channel, and if you're interested in this unique three-wheeled EV that can get over 1,000 miles of range, head to thebeardedevguy.com slash aptera. That is spelled A-P-T-E-R-A. You get $30 off your $100 reservation fee, and I get a chance to win a free aptera. Now, back to the news. Switching to German automakers, a quick story, the 2022 Mercedes-Benz EQS EPA range is in. The official range is 350 miles for the luxury flagship car. While that is plenty of range for most people, it was a surprisingly low number as the same car got 485 miles on the European WLTP test cycle. The EPA generally is far more conservative than the WLTP testing. Plus, we've seen at times the EPA give ridiculously low numbers, where once the car is tested in the real world, it far surpasses the EPA rating. I'm looking at you, Porsche. With that said, 350 is nothing to sneeze at and I doubt it'll affect anyone's buying decision. If you live in the Bay Area, you may be eligible for up to a $9,500 grant to trade in your gasoline car for an EV. This grant has been around for a little while, but it ran out of money. It has recently been funded again with $8.3 million, so look into it soon if you live in the Bay Area. It is run by the Bay Area Air Quality Management District, and it's called the Clean Cars for All program. It is a grant ranging from $5,500 to $9,500 towards a new EV plug-in hybrid, or hydrogen vehicle if you turn in a 2005 or earlier made gas vehicle. This, plus the potential $7,500 federal tax credit, plus any state-level credits in California, could mean you could get an EV for quite a reasonable sum of money. On to some unfortunate news for Chevy Bolt EV owners. If you've been following the industry at all, you're probably aware of the massive Chevy Bolt recall. I mean, this has been an unmitigated disaster and PR nightmare for Chevy and LG the maker of the Bolt's batteries. Long story short, 
there is a fault that could potentially cause Chevy bolts to catch on fire. They've isolated the problem and LG is starting to manufacture replacement batteries, but it'll take time to manufacture them all and get them installed into cars. Because of this, at least one airport, the Northwest Arkansas National Airport to be precise, is not allowing bolt owners to park there. As frustrating as that is, I totally get it. The official advice right now from General Motors itself is to park your bolt with lots of space around it. Until the battery pack is replaced in the majority of bolt EVs, this will likely be a headache for owners for some time to come. This news is a few days old, but in case you haven't heard, Tesla is moving their headquarters to Texas. This is starting to become a trend, as recently Hewlett Packard, Toyota, and others have made the same move. Elon announced the move in a recent shareholder call. He was quick to emphasize they are not leaving California fully, and they plan to increase production at their Fremont factory. I think it makes sense on a lot of fronts. It's more accessible to Musk, as he spends a lot of time already in Texas at SpaceX also. Housing and cost of living is cheaper, which makes it easier on employees. Good luck to Tesla, and I hope the move is smooth. That's it for today. Again, if you want to support the channel, and you're interested in Aptera, please consider using my referral link. Just head to thebeardedevguy.com slash Aptera. Thanks for listening.